Hello computer cooks, welcome back to the bridge of the Starship Retro Prize and to an appetizer-sized episode of Retro Recipes. Ah, the Apple IIe. Well, if you missed the last episode I did, make sure you check it out because I took this empty Apple IIe case that I acquired, put in a Raspberry Pi, connected that up via USB to the actual original mechanical keyboard so that this machine could emulate what it once was. I then handed off the Think Different challenge to a great friend of mine and retro YouTuber, Hi, so that he could take it to the next level and I called it the Apple Pie. But there was another direction I went in before I sent that off to him. You know, the Raspberry Pi is not really that retro, uh, but what it is, is the Nintendo Wii. Introducing the Apple Wii, or maybe the Apple II Wii. <clears throat> the Wii was introduced in 2006, so that's a now kind of a retro machine. So it took the same steps, because it has USB connections. I used this mechanical keyboard TUSB adapter, connected that to the Wii, thumbs up, sideways, and even the joysticks the original Apple IIe joystick that could connect via USB as well. And then to get a nice clean picture this time, I used the Wii 2 HDMI connector. I'm not the only one that does puns on names. Oh, broke it. I <laughs> pushed that back in. And that just connects up to the standard HDMI connector. Only it doesn't fit. <laughs> This isn't quite as neat a solution, um, but still fun trying to get it working. There you go. Diagonal. Lovely. Now the first fun side effect that I realized is because the Wii is controlled remotely, when you turn on the Wii, it turns on the Apple IIe wirelessly and turns on that power light on the keyboard. It's kind of cool. Now what I did was install a hack called the Homebrew Channel. Check out the description below for all the info on that. It's been around for a long time, since about 2008. It's now completely free and open source. But the nicest thing of all is when you load it up. Check out the music. It kind of makes you want to pump up the volume and dance. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And then you get this menu of the emulators you've installed. You can see there I've got a, an Amiga uh, N64. Let's try out the Amiga. Whoa. Yeah, looks about right. And then you have to reboot and back into that music. <laughs> Sorry. And we've even got an Atari 800 emulator there. So let's try a quick self-test. Yeah, it's not quite as danceable. Let's load up the best game ever made. Not the best John Williams adaptation ever made, though. Maybe we can improve it. Hmm, actually, somewhat better. Uh, no, no, go, go home, E.T. Ah. Ah. Any excuse to get back to the homebrew channel music? That was Mick Jagger or Benny Hill. I also wanted to try out one of my genuinely favorite games on the Nintendo 64, a game called Star Wars Episode One, Battle for Naboo. 
where you play as fighter pilot Lieutenant Gavin Sykes. Never heard of him. Let's load it up. Yes, and ready, play. Ah, uh, resume. Uh, well, I looked into this and unfortunately, even the Model 3 latest Raspberry Pi struggles with some of these Nintendo 64 games. So I'll say goodbye to that for now. It was worth a try. That's for our viewers in Australia. But let's stay on track with the whole reason we're doing this, emulating the Apple IIe, so this old case can become what it once was. You have to have a USB keyboard attached. Well, I do. It's the original Apple IIe keyboard running on USB. Now, to access the function keys, you actually toggle the caps lock button and... <laughs> uh, it just works. Put in some of my famous programming skills here. Well, I said hello, it's kind of goodbye. But there's still time to listen to that music one last time. Cheerio.